Let's have a little look at cleats in today's video. So I see lots of people in the studio who actually have their cleats set up in a position that would be best suited for a high heel shoe. Now, pretty and sparkly as it is, it's not as efficient as a cycling shoe. Want to know whether you've turned your cycling shoe into a high heel shoe? Let's go and have a little look in the video and I'll share with you really easy tips to follow to set those cleats up. It is a pretty shoe though. Is it mine? Well, that's for another video. <laughs> Setting up your cleats can be made very complicated. I see lots of wonderful videos on the internet, but they can lead people into overthinking it, over analyzing. Setting up your cleats has got to work for you. So the high heel shoe concept is basically me saying you're standing on your tiptoes. And if you're on your tiptoes, you've got pressure on your Achilles tendon and pressure on your calf muscle. You may even be getting cramp in your calf muscle. You may be getting cramp in your foot after a long ride. So what we want to do is to use the keyword stability. And that stability has got to work for you because guess what? The first day you took your first baby step, you became asymmetric. You started to become biomechanically inefficient and that is okay. That's natural. So if we look through the archives at Tour de France winners, we can find toe down riders, flat riders, heel down riders. So don't worry about what people say to you in your local club, your toe down, meaning your saddle's too high. You need to flatten out your foot. There are ways that we can make everybody stable and then we can start to look at the way you interact with the pedal. So this video is a soft touch to go through a couple of drills that will help you set your cleats up. But I don't care if you're a beginner or an advanced rider, there's always something to learn in the way that we position ourselves to progress. Okay, let's do some drills and set those cleats up. Okay, first drill, Let's look at how our feet interact with the ground. So you're going to need your phone, a camera, you know, someone who can video for you is ideal, but if you can set it up yourself, okay. Now what you're gonna do is just go for a little walk. Try and capture about 20 seconds worth. If you could set up a longer strip than what I've got, I'm just working to the camera here. And what you're looking for is how you interact with the ground. Your feet are going to be out, in, straight. Start to look at that and get an idea of where the pressure is on the ground because this is important. Now, from the walk, what you'll do now, three little jumps, looking ahead. Don't look at your feet. One, two, three. Your feet fall on the third one into this natural supported balance. Now, don't be surprised if they're crazy shapes and they're both different because one of your feet has got slightly higher level of stability. It's got slightly higher level of proprioceptive control. So from that position, you're thinking, okay, that one's a little bit more out. So does that mean I have to rotate that cleat coach? We'll figure that out now on the bike, but you're beginning to see it. You're beginning to see how your feet interact rather than just blindly sticking the cleats on and thinking, well, that feels okay, let's go for it. So what we're gonna do now is let's test that stability. Just go onto one foot, yeah? Keep your eyes open, look ahead, then close your eyes. See what happens. Do you start to wibble wobble? Is that a word? Around. Test it on both. Start to give yourself a score out of 10. Mm, I'm a six out of 10 on my left, but I'm an eight out of 10 on my right. But then I kick the dog with my right foot. Oh, nobody kicks dogs anymore, do they? You know what I mean. <laughs> so start to work on that. But if I work on that coach, isn't that time I should be spending on my bike? You're doing the cadence drills anyway. Your foot stability is massively important. And guess what? As we get older, we lose that stability, okay? Through those feet, because your ankle, it's not a very stable joint. And remember the key word for cleat position is stability, stability. Okay, you, you may be thinking now, why is he doing this all on his own? It would be easier having another rider on the bike. I want to do that because I want to show you that you can do this on your own, okay? So before I dive on, the cleat is set. Uh, why am I using loop cleats? Okay, that's another video, but I have a narrow foot, so the narrower look cleat works for me better. Now that's something that I will dive into in future videos, okay? But I want you to find your pedal spindle. Two fingers, and you just practice running your two fingers 
between the pedal spindle and pinching them. And that point's gonna be important because you're gonna find that on your foot now, okay? So pop your shoe on. Let's get me on. And in a second, climb on the bike. So in this neutral position, climb on. And now two fingers find the pedal spindle. And that pedal spindle creates a divide. See the gap between my fingers? That's now where I'm going to put a little sticker. Now you can get somebody to help you do that. So I can see mine is there. You just run it through. Boom, okay. Right through the middle there. And that becomes a point we're going to use as a reference now. So I'm going to have a little pedal. And then just come to stop. I'm going to move my heel in and out. Now that was pretty good, okay? Because on that movement, I got an equal spread in and out. Now I would do this over and over again with a rider to find that they have got that movement. Most people, when they put their foot in, there will only be movement outwards because they've dived in. Now that's not a problem, but you want to use that float, okay? But now, let's pop the shoe off. So where we've placed the sticker was the pedal spindle. There is a tiny mark on the cleat that measures the center, and we can see that we're right behind that. So in terms of the pressure on the foot, this is a good position, because there's a window, okay? It doesn't need to be perfectly accurate, but as long as it's behind. Now, don't get too confused by, oh, it's got to be behind, because this will cause pinching of the nerves and the blood flow, and it'll make my toe go numb. Most people's feet are numb because their shoes are too tight, their shoes are too narrow, or they've got banging off their toes in their toe box. So, shoes that fit and shoes that are not too tight, that's key. And also, feet get cold very easy, so you may just have poor circulation problems. Let's have a little look at the rotation from another angle so that we can fix that, because some of you may have your heels hitting your crank arm. Okay, that's it. Fairly simple, isn't it? Now, I will dive deeper in the next few videos and we will look at Q factor, Q angle, hip positioning, different shoes, the soles of shoes, and the speed of your foot and the pedal spindle as well. There is something that goes on there that we can also improve. But let's just summarize. Look at your walking, look at how your feet interact with the ground, understand the widest part of your foot and how that's interacting with the ground. Get the cleat set far back, set it fairly neutral, jump on, find the pedal spindle, mark it on your shoe, make sure that's behind, do your rotation. If it's all in the inside and you're hitting the crank arm, move it anti-clockwise. If it's all on the outside, move it clockwise. Small movements at a time. Go out and ride and see how you get on. And remember, numb feet, maybe cold feet, shoes too tight or shoes too narrow. So maybe in the next video, we'll talk about how to correctly get a shoe that fits. Hey, if the video's added value, give it a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. Join me in the live chat every Monday where we will be talking about bike fits in terms of positioning in every episode. Hey, maybe you want the longer videos. Come and join me on Patreon, where we go into things in a bit more detail. Okay. Hey, don't turn that cycling shoe into a high heel shoe. Well, not for cycling anyway. And remember, try those little drills that I gave you, especially the one footy drill tonight, brushing your teeth. Hey, you take care, keep smiling. I'll see you in the next video.